They married on March 12, 1969, eight days before John married Yoko Ono. Paul McCartney had been one of the world's most eligible bachelors. So what do you feel like being married at last? It feels fine, thank you. What are you going to do now? Is it going to change your life much, do you think? I don't know, really. I've never been married before. <laughs> you and Linda have been married 28 years? 28 years, man. In a business and a world where divorce is everywhere. Unfortunately, what, yeah. What's the secret? You're still writing love songs with her in mind. Yeah, well, I love her. That's the, I mean, anyone asks what the secret is, that's the secret. You know, we just fell in love. We were lucky. Um, we had our ups and downs. You know, I don't want it to seem like, you know, rosy posy. I mean, you know, we argued and we, we argue, you know, because you've got to have that. You, you can't just, you know, male, female, very difficult to live together. Right. You know, it's, it's difficult, as, as we all know, you know, yeah. it's just like not easy. But um, we've always had a good sense of humor. We've always been quite honest with each other, and we've been lucky. Um, we've spent a lot of time together. You've had a tough couple of years with her health. Mm. Much talked about that she's mm. been battling breast cancer. How's she mm. doing, first of all? She's doing great. She's doing great. Yeah, but it's been very tough. You know, it's not, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's an understatement to say it's not easy. It's very tough indeed. But you do what you've got to do, and the thing is, you know, if you catch this stuff early enough, I always use this opportunity to say to women As you watching the show, you know, um, you know, make sure you get checked, do all the examinations, because, you know, you catch it early, there's a lot they can do these days. That was July 1997. Despite Paul McCartney's optimism, Linda McCartney would soon lose her fight. The last time we had the pleasure of spending a little time together was in your recording studio outside London. And I asked you at that time, I said, um, how's Linda doing? And you said, great, with confidence. Were you putting on a brave front, or did you think she had beaten this disease? I was putting on a brave front. Yeah, you got to. Uh, obviously, you know, to right till the last moment, we hoped. But uh, yeah, I was putting on a brave face. I was very privileged to have 30 years with a very beautiful, strong, unusual, amazingly talented woman. She's a great American. Linda was like a truly great American in many, many ways. I was blessed to know this woman. Paul and Linda McCartney were devoted to each other from the beginning. Like Yoko Ono, Linda had to endure the scorn of those who blamed her for the breakup of the Beatles. She survived that. She was even a member of Paul's next band, Wings. How did Paul and Linda meet? Here's what they had to say to NBC's Tom Snyder about that in 1979. I was in London on a photographic assignment, down at a club. I went to see Georgie Fame and the Blue Flames, who's a British group. And Paul was down there. Were you not? And I picked her up. You picked me up just like that? Simple as that, Tom. <laughs> Very <laughs> romantic. I, I love uh, you coming down to speak, you know. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, there we are. Never look back. Like many young people meet. You know, a lot of guys who, who, who would have had your success and your fame and your following right. might wish that sort of thing to go on forever. Yet one day you said, I've had enough of that. I want to forgive the term settle down and have a family and be with somebody I like and somebody I love. And you didn't miss all that other thing, or you don't seem to miss it. Not really, no. I mean, what can you do, Tom? <laughs> His hands are tied, Tom. No, it's, it's true, actually. You know, I, I think the thing in my case is I've done so much of it. <laughs> and I've been knocking around the world with the Beatles for a good 10 years there. And uh, when the time came to get married, I'd, I'd uh, sown my wild oats or whatever you say, you know, so I'd had enough. <laughs> and I, I was quite ready to just kind of settle down and see what happened. And uh, through the years, we've had kids and stuff. And it's just an education seeing kids grow up. And it's a cabaret, too. Linda, how do you think audiences react to you? I think most of them know by now that you've come a long way very, very quickly as a performer and as a musician. How do you think they feel about that? Do you get any feedback like, hey, she did too much too quickly or didn't pay her dues or who does she think she is? Because Where's she coming from? Man? Where am I coming from, you mean? Um, I never tell you the truth felt audiences, you know, rejected me or didn't like me that much. Obviously, it's, even they're getting better now that they feel I've played a bit. Critics didn't like me very much. I don't think they still do. But that's their problem, isn't it, Tom? Linda and Paul McCartney in 1979, bandmates and soulmates, and 10 years into a marriage that would last nearly 30. Over the years, it became clear music was important to Paul McCartney, but not as important as his family. 
Have you surprised yourself a little bit? I mean, in terms of of, of your devotion to family. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when I was younger, definitely could have never imagined it. You know, would have really thought uh, I was just I don't know, just be a bachelor and a musician or something. Uh, it creeps up on you though, doesn't it? You know, get to an age though, you suddenly realise you like all that stuff. <laughs> You can't talk about having babies. You've got to have babies. It's a big difference, you know. Talking about them, imagining it, theorizing is one thing, but actually having them crawling all over you and they're yours, you know, is a, makes a big difference. Has it been at all difficult to be, to find a balance between being a good family man and a good music man? Uh, I don't really think it has, actually. Um, I think, you know, you, things have got to work out right. You know, you've got to, you've got to, be lucky, uh, find the right woman and stuff, you know. She's a great woman, very strong woman, very misunderstood, because when she does interviews, tends to tense up, because she's not really a sort of professional person that way. She's, she's not used to being in the public eye, she's used to being behind the camera, which is a lot easier uh, than actually sitting there and explaining, trying to justify living. I'm okay, honest, mm -hmm. you know. So she, whenever she gets in front of a camera, she does tend to be very serious and talk about issues that concern her deeply, which a lot of people like, but some people, I think, take it as a hardness and a sort of coldness, mm. that she, which is the very opposite of how she is, actually. She's, she's a great cook, great mother. She's, she's a good girl. How do you see yourself primarily, or in what order? Your family man, musician, songwriter, what, where in that do you find yourself? Sounding good. I always put them before music, really, much as I love music. If it's a choice, there's, there's, there's no contest. Mm -hmm.